VLAN stands for Virtual Local Area Network. VLANs live on layer two of the OSI model. They have the ability to slice a single physical switch into multiple logical switches. And they logically segment a physical switch into multiple broadcast domains. So a couple of things I talked about, let me explain. So first, the slice is physical switch into multiple logical switches. So if you look at what I've drawn up here, up at the top, this is a single switch. It has green ports, red ports, and blue port, and also a white port. Now the white port here is the trunk port, so forget about that, we'll talk about it in a moment, but blue port is a voice VLAN, red port could be sales VLAN, green port could be marketing VLAN. By assigning different VLANs to different ports, we're able to take a single physical switch and make it appear as if it's part of multiple logical switches. What does that mean? By default, this host, let's say if this is host A and this is host B, they cannot talk to each other because they're on different VLANs. Host A is on the green VLAN, host B is on the red VLAN, they're different VLANs. They cannot talk to each other. Also, switches by default, like I said, have what's called a default VLAN. And default VLAN is VLAN 1, which means all the ports by default are assigned to that VLAN. But we have the ability to change that. Now, all the ports that belong to the same VLAN, they create what's called a single broadcast domain. So for example, in our case, these two ports, the green ports, and these two green ports combined together, these four green ports are part of a single broadcast domain. These red ports right here are part of another broadcast domain. So what that means is, so remember we talked about how all Fs are sent when there's an ARP communication that happens? When you have logical segmentation like that, the broadcast is contained within that broadcast domain. So the green ports are part of a single broadcast domain and hosts attached to those ports can only see and send broadcasts within that domain. The red ports or any other VLAN, the blue one, they do not get affected. They never see the broadcast. They never get impacted by it. It's a nice way of reducing the broadcast domain because broadcast is a good thing because that allows us to discover devices. It's also a bad thing because it takes CPU cycles and memory, not only on the switch, but also the hosts that receive those frames that they don't care for. So this is a way of kind of bringing order to the chaos, if you will. And in a traditional layer two network, like I said, devices in one VLAN can't talk to devices in another VLAN. Also one VLAN equals one subnet. That's a one to one ratio. So when we talk about IP addressing later, when we discuss layer three, that's section three of the course, you'll get to learn what that means. But just remember that one VLAN equals one subnet at layer three. And finally, VLANs can also be used for security to control access. Now, it's, it's a very rudimentary level of security, you cannot consider it by today's standards and by today's sophisticated type of attacks that are being launched. VLAN is not going to cut it. It's a very small, minute piece of the puzzle that security is. But nevertheless, it's poor man's security at a very basic fundamental level. That said, now let's look at the command line interface. Here I am on the core switch in Packet Tracer. Let's take a look. Show VLAN brief. That's a command you guys want to memorize. Okay, so now we're getting our hands dirty. That's how we become a network engineer, right? Got to gain confidence, got to do hands-on stuff. That's what it's about. So as you can see, all of these ports that you're seeing on the switch are automatically part of VLAN 1. That's also called a default VLAN, okay? So I want you to keep that in mind. That's also an exam question. What's a default VLAN? VLAN 1 on a switch is considered a default VLAN. All the ports are automatically assigned to it. Now there's a couple of additional 
reserved VLANs 1002 through 1005. We don't care for them because they're legacy, they're obsolete. We don't care for them. The only one we care for is the default one and the ones that we will create. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind, though, is do not use the default VLAN. Cisco suggests that as soon as you get a switch, create new VLANs and make sure that all of your ports are outside of VLAN 1 because VLAN 1 is a low-hanging fruit for hackers, right? Bad actors. Anybody and everybody on planet Earth knows that Every single switch on planet Earth, whether it's Cisco or non-Cisco, has VLAN 1 by default. So they can construct frames, they can, they can do things that can cause havoc within your switching environment using VLAN 1. But if you didn't allow the bad actor to do that, that's good security to begin with. That's good practice. So that said, let's go ahead and create our first VLAN. So we'll do configuration terminal. We want to type in VLAN, let's say 20, and we'll call it sales. And we'll, what we'll do next is we'll create VLAN 30 and we'll call it marketing. Exit, exit, show VLAN brief, and voila, here we go. We got sales and marketing VLANs created. Now, as you can see, there are no ports in front of these VLANs, which means these VLANs exist on this switch, but as long as there are no ports associated with them, they're useless. Like they're not doing anything. They're not participating in any function on this switch. So what we have to do next is we have to assign ports to these VLANs. And we have different types of ports and we'll get to the, into the port types later, but let's take a look at how to configure a switch port to begin with. The interface range, fast ethernet, zero slash 11 dash 15. That means port 11 through 15. We'll be able to take this configuration. Switch port mode access. That means that these are access ports. So if you recall, access distribution core, access is where we have end devices and end hosts plugged in. We'll type in switch port access VLAN, let's say 20, which is the sales VLAN. This command assigned fast ethernet 11 through 15 to the sales VLAN. Now let's do this next. Fast ethernet 16, through 20, we're gonna go ahead and say switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 30. Exit and show VLAN brief. And what you will now see is that sales has ports assigned to it and marketing has ports assigned to it. So what that means is if you took port 11 and plugged a desktop into it or an IP phone into it, it's automatically going to belong to this VLAN, sales VLAN. And if you have marketing folks, you can go ahead and plug in marketing folks in marketing VLAN and you can have different types of configuration like DHCP server and TFTP and other things for their phone and other types of configuration that their host can automatically get by being part of this VLAN. And we'll talk through those design details later, but these are the fundamental pieces that will help you understand how this works. Now, if you wanted to delete VLANs on a switch, what you have to do is, there's a very specific command. You have to type in a command, delete VLAN.dat, and you have to hit enter twice, and then you have to type in reload. So I went ahead and rebooted the switch so we can take a look. Let's take a look, show VLAN brief, and voila, all those VLANs are gone, but the rest of our configuration is intact. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.